morning, Northwoods Baptist Church. I'm so very thankful for uh, you being with us on day number 38 of our 40 days in prayer. And we're continuing our study here in Psalm 119. Uh, just something interesting. I need to tell you a story as we're getting started. Highway 2 is currently in the middle of being repaired right there in front of our house. And on the way uh, to go, you have to merge whenever you go from uh, 71 to 2. You go over the overpass. Well, there's a merge that comes from 71 to 2, and then that goes through a stoplight, and then that merges all into one lane. And it's amazing how if you're driving through there, I know that it merges into the left lane. There are signs about a half a mile back telling you it merges into the left lane. But inevitably, as you come around that corner down highway, uh, to come around that, that corner there on highway 2, someone has to decide to jump over in front of you and people are fighting and jockeying to try to get just one more car in front of the car that's next to them and, and pushing themselves forward. And you know, one of the things that irritates the fire out of me is whenever somebody stays in that lane on the right-hand side, knowing they have to merge into the left lane and they hang out right there on that right-hand side until the very last second, trying their hardest just to pass as many cars as possible whenever they've been given signs that have said, get over, get over, get over, get over. I'll just be honest with you. There's part of me that wants to go ahead and just take my truck and go and knock them into one of those barrels there. Um, I don't want to hurt anybody, but it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt my feelings to see their car crash into one of those barrels and get a dent on the front of it, if you know what I'm talking about there. But sometimes we get so aggravated and frustrated whenever people don't follow the law or the rules of the road. How often do we get broken and our heart tender whenever we see, and what is our response when we see people break the law of God? In verse number 136 of Psalm 119, notice the psalmist's response to this. He says, Rivers of waters run down mine eyes because they kept not thy law. Rivers of waters run down mine eyes because they kept not thy law. Does your heart break? for those who reject God's word. You see, this psalmist has had enemies coming and attacking him multiple times, and they've been persecuting him. As you read through Psalm 119, you can see that they've been persecuting him. They've gone against him. They fought against him. Verse number 161 says, Princes have persecuted me without cause. So with this, he has been attacked multiple times, and his heart has been broken because of the actions of these people that are there. And yet, he feels sorry and broken for them. Well, why? Because if they walk contrary to the law of God, if they reject the word of God, what hope is there for them? I'm reminded of Jesus as he was being nailed to the cross. Remember the phrase that he said? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. We're reminded there in the book of Acts of even Stephen. Stephen, as he's cast off the temple and he's thrown down before they kill him. Remember Stephen's last words? It says, Lord, Lay not this sin to their charge. What an amazing testimony to love those that hate us, to love those that would see as our foes. But more than just to just pray for them and to say, you know what, I want to show them the love of God and pray for them, but to weep over them, to weep for their souls, to weep for God to do something in their life. Um, you see, sin, <clears throat> sin, whenever people dwell and live in sin, it not only breaks the law of God, but if you look at Hosea and you read through the, the illustration in the book of Hosea as it's written, sin not only breaks the law of God, but it breaks God's heart. Sin breaks the heart of God. And recognizing that there are people, and even Christians, who reject the word of God and decide to hang on to their sin and to dwell in their sin, our heart should break because of that. We should be broken because of the sin of those people that are around us. We should be broken uh, for the lost and crying out to God. And he used the example of rivers of water run down my eyes. He's weeping uh, for those that sin. I, I want to read a quote from, uh, uh, from John Phillips here. It says, Sin has plowed this planet with sorrow. It has planted every graveyard. It has made necessary every hospital. It has built every prison, every psychiatric institution, every slum. Were it not for sin, we could disband our armies, dissolve our police forces, open our prisons, disarm our, dismiss our legislators. Ah, that would be a good thing there. Uh, unlock our doors. Jesus looked at the ravages of sin and he wept. <laughs> what a thought. So far from hating his enemy, this psalmist pitied them and he wept for them. I believe this is the secret to 
having a revival and a burden for the lost is instead of just uh, being angry and aggravated and frustrated, we weep and we mourn for them. We're broken for them. Um, there's a song uh, called Rescue the Perishing. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin in the grave. Weep or the erring ones. Lift up the fallen. What hope do we have? The next line, I love it. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. You know, we have a lost world around us. A lost world that we can see on all sides. And we have opportunities to witness to them. We have opportunities to love them. We have opportunities to pray for them. We should be weeping over the lost in our community and asking God to reach and to touch them. You know, I'm so very thankful for this uh, 40 days in prayer that we can spend time praying for God to challenge us, for God to speak to us, for God to send revival to us, and for God to, God to just really to do a work in our church and in our lives. Um, our day, 40 days of prayer. Today, I'd like you to take opportunity and ask God to help you. Pray for your family. Pray for the salvation of your kids, for your spouse. Pray for those that are around you. Pray for them to be set apart to God. Pray for you to be an example to them. Pray for their safety. Take opportunity today to pray for your family and for God to do a great work in the life of your family. Thank you so much for tuning in to 40 Days in Prayer, Day 38, which means we only have two more days. So Day 39, hope you can join in and be part of everything going on. If you want to be annoyed with more videos that we post, uh, go ahead and click the um, subscribe button and the notification buttons, and it'll tell you every time we ever post anything on your uh, YouTube page. Thank you so much for tuning in and being part of our 40 Days in Prayer. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.